Hi guys, welcome back to another Steam free to play walkthrough. Today we have BU2. This is, BU1 was actually a game that was like one of the first videos I did when I was trying to get back into YouTube. Well, actually, when I was actually trying to get into YouTube for seriously for the first time, where I was constantly uploading and whatnot. Back when I had the bad mic and I was like super nervous about making videos and whatnot. Um, seems like it has a voiceover in this one. I'm gonna try to get all the endings, but there's no Steam achievements in this, so it's kind of hard to tell if you do or not. I'm gonna try to get as many endings as possible. And as always, I'll leave a link to the game in the description if you want to check it out slash support the creator. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Alright. This game, oh, excuse me, this game contains some dark themes with some viewers, which some viewers may find disturbing, such as death and suicide. Uh, I just woke up hard. You do not feel comfortable with these themes. I highly recommend not playing. Also, there was like this demonic cat thing in the first one that was like super creepy. Like some of the art sounds Birth and death are oh, funny they things. read to me now. Sick. People end, they stop, they die. Not sure how to put it more bluntly. But the echoes of their life lives on without them, and the memories of the people they meet. A little snapshot of their existence contained within another's brain. And then the way we change people. Our parents help define who we are, our teachers, our friends. Without them, we wouldn't be who we are. And even when they're gone, <sighs> We still have that part of them in us. And then we change the people we meet. And so on and so forth. The echoes of life live on. Even if the one that it started with is long gone. You even can get quite clear glimpses of people that have died possibly hundreds or even thousands of years ago in the text they've written. I mean, it, it's it's kind of shocking. My job's easy you here. Can I just read click. a book <laughs> of some poor soul that died forever ago, but their words still there, clear as day. It's it's quite it's quite the sight. <laughs> oh my! Today something new will be born. It's your well beautiful baby Bonnie. I hope you take good care of her. You bring Bronnie home, swaddled in soft blankets. You set her delicately down in her crib. She quietly begins to cry. Oh shit! Baby crying! Yelled. What do you do? Huh. That's nice. At least there's somebody reading. I don't have to read. Uh, okay, we have six options. And Lay her some oh god, it's going- Give her a soft toy. Uh, we'll just do the first too, option uh, first. You're probably hungry, so getting her some breast milk is probably the best plan? There's a small problem though, you're a single dad. Hey. You try to acquire some breast milk, but unfortunately that only results in a few restraining orders. Yeah. Eventually, you remember that baby euphorbia exists and that solves your current problem. Oh my. The next few years are comprised mostly of crying and pooping, and considering that I'm not a sadist, I'm not going to subject you to that. So I hope you don't mind, but there may be an itty bitty time skip. It's a wonderful spring day, the sun feels warm on Big your skin, there's a soothing breeze, carrying the smells of flowers and newly blooming life. It's a perfect day to go on a walk with your little Bonnie. As you peacefully stroll along, a little white rabbit jumps out in front of you. Bonnie is simply overjoyed and reaches out towards it. But the next second, there's a sickening screech, and the rabbit oh is God. now airborne, being held in fierce talons, oh, that's fine. piercing through its flesh, staining its white fur so very, very, very red. I thought it was going to be too off into the distance. Bonnie looks up <laughs> at you, tears in her eyes. What do you do? That's awkward. He's flying! Don't worry your little head about yes. anything. That little He's rabbit flying. always wants to know how it feels to fly, so his friend Mr. Hawk thought he'd help him out with that. Hell that's yeah, be a breathtaking bro. view from up there. <laughs> oh, that's the one. A small seed of an idea was planted in Bonnie's brain, soon to germinate into a beautiful tree. And that idea was, flying sounds good. I should try that no, sometime. No, no. Sadly, that tree would quickly break and fall onto Bonnie's legs, smashing one of them. 
What tree? Alas, jumping off a roof with only cardboard oh. wings is not how one begins to fly. <laughs> you see Bona looking up at you, beaming. Her face and hands a rainbow smudge of chalky marks. In her hand, she tightly clutches a scrunched piece of paper. She raises it up in triumph. It appears to be an incomprehensible mess of scribbles. A mess of overlapping chalky colours. You assume it's a deep, postmodern representation of the human like my soul. Like But Bonneville informs oh, you that it worse. is a dinosaur. The... Delight. Clap your hands in delight. It's beautiful, my little Michelangelo. Bonnie's filled with glee. She's quite literally bouncing around the place with happiness. Eventually, you both go oh, back home and have a nice peaceful night's of sleeps. But when you're away, you discover that every surface of your household has yeah, been covered in chalk. From the toilet, to the carpet, to the walls, to your own face. Hey. Filled with a burning emotion, you quickly run to the no, bedroom, kicking that. down the door, and you scream, Oh my god, oh, we're perfect. gonna be fucking rich! Hey. As your child's the most prolific art prodigy of this generation, <laughs> you ring around a few I'm famous art critics to appraise Bonnie's wondrous work. They are not exactly encouraging. They recommend a cleaner. You tell them to fuck off. Hey. She's clearly ahead of her time. Um, Dad, are slugs jealous of yeah, snails? Like it's like... just snails have those little houses on top of their backs, and slugs don't. It's it's just it's just unfair. They don't have a place to hide I'm... and curl up in, or a nice place to sleep when it's cold outside. It just it, it just doesn't seem very nice. Life's well, fair. life isn't fair. Deal with it. Dab. Well, I well all life these isn't fair. Deal with it. Dab. The Great Slug well, War. During the Great Snail vs. Slug War of 1890, the snail Sir Leopold of Estonia wrested the crown from the ruling snail, King Jeremy the Gooey of the Back Garden. And in his victory, he declared that no slug shall ever wear a shell again to remind them of their shameful defeat. Uh, I'll take the good dad out. A few answer. weeks later, you find Bonnie in your back garden with rows and rows of slugs and snails in front of her. She appears to be wearing a tiny, 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 tiny crown. You attempt to ask what's going on, but all the reply you get is a brief scream of, I am the queen now! <laughs> to this day, you still have no idea where she got that little, little crown. I like slugs. I like slugs. Well, you. <laughs> I like slugs too. You and Bonneval have had a long day oh wandering God. around the great outdoors, peeping at wildlife. As you sleepily wander home, the sun already setting, the sky at dark blue, the last traces of light saying goodbye to the world. From the shadows, oh God. you hear a sickening cry. This evil cat. Oh God, God, oh God, no. No, 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 I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. Out of the darkness, you see a poor, crushed little snail Aww. under Bonnebel's foot. How did that happen? You're going to hell, you <laughs> snail! <laughs> no. Um, it's only a snail. Bonnie, we are higher life forms. Oh, Bonnie, so... I, know, I know it. I know it's bad now, but we, we, we can learn from our mistakes. Oh. Um, it's only oh, sweet pea, don't cry, it's all coming. You didn't mean it. it. It was an accident. It was a horrible thing to happen, but That's crying the about answer. stuff can't change it. Bonnie I'm doesn't seem to system. want to reply. Right. It is the dead of night, and you hear a door slowly creak open. You go back in time. Small, scared voice. Um, there, there's a monster under my bed. Jump to people's elbow on him. Give the body a gun and say, you'll be safe with this if you see a monster. Just shoot it. Oh my god, oh my god, there's a monster under your bed. Be a monster what you Quick, quick, quick. Get my baseball bat. I'm gonna call the police. Bonnie, everything is okay. Oh my god, oh Bonnie, my god. don't worry. I'm sure the monster is funny goes back to oh, I sleep clicked on accident. and has god. a very peaceful night. You can't right click either of ghost. And eventually, you find a rather unpleasant spell emanating from Bonnie's room. After further inspection, you find a series 
of rather, rather rancid cereal bowls under Bonnie's bed. After inquiring to Bonnie on why such things are there, um, she replies, well, if the monster's too scared to leave from under my bed, it wouldn't, wouldn't be able to get food, and it would Aww. be hungry, and I'd be sad if I couldn't get food, so I, I, I brought it food, so I could have the food to get it. I'm happy food. about it, at least. It I don't know. My daughter's it's awesome. Like, it seemed like a good idea at the time. I hope it's okay. <laughs> the air is cold. The sky is dark. Spooks and monsters are bound, creeping through every shadow, with one thought burning in their minds. Holy shit! Holy shit, we're gonna eat a ton of sweets! Bonnie's face is pressed up against our living room window, <laughs> looking out at the majesty of Halloween. Spooks, ghouls, and ghosties abound, and princesses. For some ex- unexplicable reason, princesses. I don't know why. Don't fit for the theme. Don't make sense. Why? Why? Oh, that's, oh, sorry. That's aside the point. Um, and on this fateful day, you have the chance to choose what particular spook, ghosty, or ghoul your little Bonneville will dress up as. Is oh. spiders do have eight arms, and that would give you the addition of a, a priest to show all those pagan sinners the true lie. A lawyer, because not a queen, because if those other little girls are gonna be dressed up as princesses, your kid's gonna outrank them. Oh, yes. Bonnie had an interesting interpretation of being a monarch, sending people to death when they didn't give her enough candy. It was a little unorthodox, but people found it charming. Till she started carrying on the axe and attempted to make her threats. Um, well, a bit more than just threats. It's a lovely autumn day. Orange leaves gently drift along in the cold breeze. Once again, you're going for a walk with Bonnie. It feels peaceful. I'm gonna die. This is death flag. You feel quite content. Am I gonna die? Numb to the world. My old? is happily skipping beside you. Hmm. You can't even feel the cold breeze on your face. The death flag. Everything's fine. Wait, you can't... You can't feel the cold breeze on your face. It's like November, you should probably be able to feel that. Recently, I'm your sorry. arm... Doesn't seem to move. Oh, I'm dying! Realise that Stroke. soothing sensation of numbness. It felt quite calming at first. Break it but out, man. Now, you can't feel your body. All the sensations you've lived your whole life with. The feeling of air rushing in and out your lungs. Your heartbeat. Your clothes on your skin. They were so omnipresent. It just faded to the background. You forgot about them, but... Now it's gone. It's absence makes you feel so... Empty. You begin to slowly... Slowly topple backwards. For a second you worry you'll hurt yourself when you hit the ground, but you remember at this point your body seems not to be capable of feeling anything, let alone pain. You look up at the sky, your vision uh, beginning to dying. fuzz. There's a face, someone above you, someone you really should remember. Their mouth is moving as if they're yelling. Shouting, uh-huh. calling it, but you can't seem to hear anything. You attempt to speak, to try and soothe that distressed soul. You try to speak, but somehow you can't manage to get the words out. You desperately try, repeating it over and over in your head, but in the end, it's only silence. The last experience you'll ever have is that single thought. At least, it's funny, I, I don't want to leave. I'm sorry. Okay. It's all going to be okay. I, I love you. It's I don't want to leave. Hmm. Damn! I could score my kid for life and be like... Uh... Shoot. Ah! I don't know. Damn. It's all good. I I love you. I love you. You have.
have nothing else, you have me. Oh, is it Satan? Oh, he didn't read this part to me. When all hope is lost, when reality is unbearable, look away from the world and you'll discover a whole new one. Highly embraced in my arms. I hope you never look back. You hear a faint cry off in the distance. Oh god, we're going Suddenly into the world. Suddenly the cries are not so distant. A wave of noise hits you, cackling, hooting, screaming. You can't tell whether the makers of the sound are going through the most sensual joy or the worst pain you could imagine. You open your eyes, the noise suddenly stops. You see strange figures in front of you, small, cowering in a mixture of hope and fear on their twisted faces. One slowly creeps towards you, and it appears to attempt to bow, even though its body seems rather unsuited to the position. It splutters out. Please, please, save us. The world is big and scary, but now you're here. Everything will be okay. You can protect us from the monsters at night and feed us when we're hungry. Teach us what's the difference between right and wrong. Please, we beg you. The one who fell from the stars. Help us, help us. I see fear in your hearts, and you are right to be fearful. For I am terrified. They appear to have set up some sort of feast to celebrate the coming of their new saviour. They seem to be happily chirping to each other in some sort of strange alien song, passing small cups of dirty water around as if they were wine hmm. and happily munching on something that can be charitably described as very, very stale bread. For a second they offer you no meat, vegetarianism for life. Yeah. Any food is good food, but I like food. Give me food. Pizza! Any food. Meat is the manliest of meals. I eat meat. Meat is the manliest of foods. You need a lot of protein to get muscles like this. It's fun if you don't get it. Only real men could understand. Even if I'm a girl, I'll definitely be more of a man than you. There's nothing quite as manly as having a ton of meat in your mouth. Um, no homo. Underground. On top of the ground. Treehouse. I'm so confused. On top of the ground. Underground. These creatures are worth as much as dirt to me. It makes sense that they should burrow through it like the worms they are. <laughs> Suddenly, your little world becomes uh -oh. very, very still. The details begin to blur and fuzz over. There's a mind-breaking leap loud noise like shattering glass but replicated a thousand times over everything's dark everything's pitch black you can't see your little monster friends are running around in blind panic with as little on earth of a clue as what's happening as you currently have what the fuck do you think you're oh, doing? Jesus. Person. Being a badass boss, babe. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Wait, wait, wait a second! Did I appear in a flash of lightning? What the hell is wrong with my hands? If you gave me dark eyeliner, by God, I'm slapping the hell out of us when we wake up! The evil apparition stares at you with fierce intensity. Oh, fuck no! The narrator did not just call me evil looking! I am not the bad guy here! Oh, God, what are these meant to be? You're too old to be playing with dolls! What the fuck do you think you're doing? The monster looks down with sheer disgust at the little creatures scurrying around in a blind panic at its feet. This is not how we're meant to deal with this situation. It stamps down hard like an exterminator on a particularly annoying cockroach. Oh damn, murder. One of the tiny being's bodies <laughs> explodes beneath the weight of its foot. Its splattered remains begin to ooze gently across the floor. The helpless little creatures begin to cry and shriek, Please, stop it! Before the despicable monster can say another word, you raise your hand. She vins it to atone for its evil way. Foul sinner, there's no possible way you could atone for your crimes. But bow before my radiant mm. perfection now, and you may be able to save one small fragment of your soul. The monster replies, You've got to be fucking j- Its face freezes. 
It seems quite disorientated. Disorientated. Its mouth begins to move. Its hands move up to try and prevent the words from escaping it. But then its arms quickly snap back to its sides. And in a dead monotone voice it says, Oh great perfect radiant being, your words are just, and I am forever grateful for your advice, mercy, I shall go, I am forever grateful for your understanding, now to spread word of your awesomeness and how super duper cool you are. Not about your totally delusional. delusional the little creatures begin to cheer. Hooray! You banished the monster. Oh my god, I know you were awesome before, but you literally, you're so awesome, I can't describe I know, it. I know. So I'll just make random noises and hope it does it justice. Fuck. Don't hurt yourself, bro. Uh, you got this. You saved us from the monsters, from the bad place. The bad place is a place from the monsters came, which is bad. So if the monsters came from it, the monsters would be bad. Well, if it came from the bad place, it being bad goes without saying, because bad stuff comes from the bad place. We took like a way bad. veered to left turn. <laughs> what happened to bad. my kid? Bad. 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 <laughs> bad. 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 It's just very, 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 very. I want my family nice. back. We're so terribly scared. Most things will crawl out of there. They come. I don't know if we'll get all the endings because it's 22 minutes and we haven't got to one ending yet. So. Please make them go quiet. Such a divine thing as you could surely stop such terrible things from happening. You could stop anything. I know I'm pretty awesome. Bad from happening. I couldn't stop myself from having a stroke apparently. So apparently. Oh, Why great! Me? No, 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 no! Can't make me. No. Please, stop Why me. Who is this? Go to bad place. So you decide to go. No, I don't. So you decide to go. No, I do not. So you decide to go. No, I. Just go. And now you're there. So All your familiar. charming little creatures are gone. All your creations, from their homes, the bountiful food you gave them. There's none of it. There's nothing. You can't keep me out forever. You can't keep us out. This is not a fairy tale. This is not a game you can win. Yes, it is. Well, happens it's a game you. I can win. And no matter how much you cry or pretend, tears won't change it. They're gone. They'll be gone forever. It's just life. The life is life what you make no it. no saving point. There are no second chances. In the end, it will always be a game over. Why did you take so long? I have been waiting. Hey, Skelly Girl. You see girl. me? Do you know who I am? Uh -uh. I was born rich, beautiful. I'm smart, athletic, and oh, oh so, you. so talented. Nice. I put Leonardo da Vinci to shame. And do you know why? I was born this way. I was born a Who queen. are you, Lady Gaga? And who are you? When a person walks past you on the street, they'll never remember your face. They'll never even think to try. Because we're Probably all because born into this world with certain roles. Died. You may be born into Africa to walk down the as a child, smitten with illness and disability, led to leave a short life ending in the arms of your weeping mother. He couldn't control his fate. Neither can you and neither can I. Because in the end, we're all paper brags being blown <coughs> around in the breeze. And where we land is not up to us. And we can't escape once we do land there. You'll never be as pretty as me. You'll never be a queen. You'll never be beautiful. You cannot escape that. That's all good. I, I know. We can't help where we're born, but we can help what we grow into. I'm not stuck as what I was, and I'm not stuck as who I am. I can grow, I can change. My life might not be perfect. I might not be perfect, but 
I can work towards being in a better place than I am now. You'll say we never fly again. Well, watch me grow wings. Suddenly, your pack, your the little monster people. friends surround Thick. you, celebrating. We did it. You did it. You actually did it. Yes, yeah, I'm the best. You're amazing. Yes. You destroyed the heart of darkness, and yes. you came out the other side. I destroying it, it's but I okay did it. It's okay now. Ooh. You're safe. Thick. Nothing can stop you or hold you back. We can be here forever. You can be whatever you want to be. A king, a queen, a god. As long as you're here, you can do anything. God. You can take care of us. Teach us new things. Help us when we have nightmares. Not Give us silly costumes to wear. As long as you're here, you're safe. I have to leave. My family needs me. I'll see you, potato people. The world begins to dissolve around you, like paint no, like, starting fuck, to run in the rain. Oh, I guess. You don't go. know if you chose the right thing. I Alice did. had to leave Wonderland. Best. Sometimes a fantasy can be the only thing keeping a fragile soul alive. But if you stay there forever, you can never truly live. My daughter needs me. The world melts away. You awake to a blinding light. I'm not sure if you're quite ready for reality. My it's all me. good to love yourself and be content with who you are, but when you love yourself quite this much, it can become very toxic. Your own pride and passion drive many friends away, and it ends up biting you in the ass more sure. than a few times. But your sheer conviction and determination, your demand of the universe that I will be something, manages to pay off. You become a rap artist, so you can talk about how awesome you are as much as you want without anyone blinking an eye. The hip hop. You're Every honestly hip -hop. quite the natural Don't talent at it. Bang bang you're awarded with a Grammy, proclaiming that you're an adult and you don't need handouts, followed by an incident where you get tased by Ryan Reynolds and Elijah Wood. Thankfully, you managed to get away with it, saying it was just an elaborate piece of performance art dedicated to the band Lonely Island. But it wasn't. This is not the last time you'll be tased. Hey. After a turbulent life, you sit alone in your house, staring into the middle distance. You made many mistakes. Oh, I did. And in hindsight, you were not exactly a perfect mistakes. human being. That was awesome. But you tried to live your life to the fullest. And at least that's something you do not regret. What happened to my daughter? The queen is dead. Ah, she just like disappears. What is that? A six or a noose? Oh, six, five, four. Six, five. Alright. I'm gonna go through it real quick, see what another option is. See how much it changes, I guess, but. We've already heard all this. It reads a little bit slow. It took like 28 minutes to get through one ending. Uh, watch some TV, fool. Just had a baby and you're awfully tired. You deserve a reward. Technically, your mother went through most of the work, but you did have to deal with her complaining, so it all bounces out in the end. The next few years are comprised mostly of crying and pooping. That's the same. Okay, same, same, same. Bird goes flying. Survive all of the fittest motherfuckers. Get that fluffy bastard. The next day at school, Bonnie saw a kid in a wheelchair with a candy bar and proceeded to push him out of the chair, steal the candy bar, and run away, screaming, Survival of the fittest, motherfucker! As you can see, you're quite an inspiring role model. How dare you waste my precious child's time with such a name tag? Playing with chalk on paper, she should be learning useful things like algebra, quantum physics, quantum mechanics. You know stuff that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis, not this damn hippie shit. I teach teacher very, very calmly and slowly explains to you that your daughter is five and learning about quantum mechanics may not be, may be not appropriate for their age and also the curriculum is government mandated and that is mandated by the Board of Education. If you have a problem with it, please take it up with them. You pretentious waste of oxygen. I will take it up with them. Um, Dad? 
up to something and slow. Considering the evolutionary viability of both of them, I don't think either of them are better off. I mean, slugs and snails have been around for thousands and thousands of years, and one was superior to the other. They were have would have outcompeted one another years and years ago. They're still around, so presumably they're at an evolutionary match, a tie as it were. So yeah, they're probably equal. Otherwise, one of them would totally be dead and not here, and yeah. Ah, I think Bonnie might hate you now, and with a response like that, I certainly do too. I like slugs. So I'll let you. You and Bonnabelle have a wonderful, so much, okay, this is kind of like the first one. It doesn't really change like the main story plot, it just changes the ending. So we'll probably just do these two endings, because it's going to be a really long video if I try to do them all. You're going to hell, you snail murderer, you evil monster. How did I become a rapper in the first one? I was like the best dad ever. And it had like nothing to do with my kid unless... I, I don't know what happened there. Oh, oh. I wasn't sad about the snail. It's just now my shoes are all gross with the slime and I thought... I thought you'd be upset with me for getting them dirty. It's the dead night, blah, 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 monster. Oh, oh, I gave her the gun. After a restful night's sleep, you go into Bonnie's room and find that every surface of it is completely riddled with bullet holes. With Bonnie hiding in the middle of it, hiding in a smoke in a makeshift fort of cushions with a still smoking gun in her hand and a very, very, very tired looking eyes. She says in a quiet voice, I think I got it. There is cold, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna make her what she wanna be. A priest. I was hoping Bonnie would run around talking about the several deadly sins and proclaiming that a night of decadence and gluttony such as Halloween is an abomination unto the eyes of our Lord God. But she decided to do some research on Halloween religion and discovered that originally people didn't hand out sweets. They handed out things called soul cakes. And for every soul cake eaten, a soul would be sent to heaven and released from purgatory. I want a soul cake. Bonnie rather took this to heart and decided to eat as much candy as possible in an attempt to save as many souls from purgatory as she could. I would say she used, she just used this as an excuse to eat copious amounts of candy, but she was very, very, very sick afterwards. And even after a copious amount of stomach pain persisted, in her words, if I don't eat candy, they will be stuck in purgatory forever. So I guess she's a paragon of the moral code, but I was a little sick of cleaning up all that sick. A lovely autumn day. This is where I die. Sick. Okay, if we do it like this, we might be able to get to all the endings because it's like five minutes if we just skip all the main plot points. There's no, like... <laughs> I guess we'll do this one. I'm looking for a bad one. Doesn't hurt. You have nothing else, you have me. That doesn't really change at all. I don't want to save you. Any food. I mean, food is great. Without food, I'd be dead. And if I were dead, I wouldn't be able to eat food. Which would be a crying shame. Food. We're just going to click all the options. I might not get all the ending, but we'll click all the options so we can read those. Yes, it'd be, it'd be good. On the ground. Ground level is by far the most spiritually balanced. A mother Gaia below, in the endless tranquility of the sky above. Plus, ha, huh, you're not fit enough to climb a tree, and you're de most definitely not fit enough to fit down a hole. You were fitter, you would fit. But sadly, you're not fit enough to fit. Fit, hey. Suddenly, your little world becomes very, very still. Okay, it's the monster thing. Alright. <laughs> Wait, sir. You channel the power of magic and friendship to create a beam, rainbow beam of happiness and acceptance which proceeds to melt the skin off the creature's face. The creature begins to scream. The scream lasts for 10 minutes until your joy laser <laughs> thankfully burns through its very little vocal cords. It takes a while, but friendship will always prevail. In an amount of time, it does become a burning pile of ash on the ground. Ah, friendship. Gotta love it. The cre little creatures begin to cheer. Hooray! You banished the monster. Oh my god, I know you were awesome before, but you literally, you're so awesome, I can't describe it. Oh, I know. I am awesome. Go to the bed. We gotta go to the bed. We're about to the end. 
Oh, what is this? How dare you waste your precious gifts? People are dying. People are starving. Sickness, war, violence, and abuse. Look. What are you doing? Playing a fucking video game. That's what I do. That's how I do. That's what the can uh, fluffy panda do. How re revoltingly selfish can you be? You can't imagine the rotten world, yet you stand idly by while people's lives f falling apart. Your clean water at just the flick of a tap, a soft place to call home, where you don't need to worry about being murdered in your sleep. That's nice. Food and education. Do you have any idea how many people would kill to be in your place? You were born into an absurd privilege. What do you do with it? Game, baby. You waste your time playing a video game. You fucking sicken me. Fight me, damn. We're only human. The world is a big and scary place, and with all my heart, I want to make it a better one. I can throw my body and soul into it, but eventually I'll break. Small place to catch a breath, to shut down where all the fear and sadness cannot reach. A place where there's no need to worry, and I can simply enjoy the silliness of a video game. It allows me to continue without breaking. Yes, it can be self-indulgent, maybe a little selfish, no doubt, but humans are surprisingly fragile, and not all of us can deal with the worst parts of the world. Without breaking, I need this small bit of peace, just to keep going. Please, I need this. Suddenly you're back. Hey, I made it back. Screw you, animal people. I guess I'll live with them today. Stay. I can't blame you. Every wish, every whim, every dream, every fantasy, here it can all be real. You could save the world against impossible odds, fall in love, have children, but in the end, it's only you, and you, can, you can't escape that. No matter how much you play pretend, that hollow feeling just grows and grows. You can try to scream for someone, but the only thing that will come back is the echoes of your own voice. Imagination is a beautiful thing. It can get you through the immense amounts of sadness and pain, but there's one thing it can't give you, and that is a real friend. It will always just be you, forever and ever and ever. The priest of the dead. The priest is dead. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Alright, let's try the other options. Yeah, like I said, I might not get all the endings, but Birth I will... death of oh, God, funny wait a things. Oh, f ah, I closed it. Oops. Apparently the voiceover comes back on. Gotta go fast. I'm going the distance. I'm going for speed. She's all alone, all alone in her time of need. I'm racing, pacing, hugging the turns. Something, something riding on my horse. Mozart. My child is going to be a true intellectual. They must listen to Mozart. Surely that will soothe their quaking soul. No, it really, really didn't. But after about half an hour of continuous crying, you decide to change the music. Sadly, the only thing you change it to is something called Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. Oh. Calms them down, but the side effects are ungodly. You have to keep playing this tune, and as soon as you stop, they start to cry. But it's so mind numbing. Survival of the fittest motherfucker! Oh, that rabbit had just escaped from a super evil murder prison and was planning to blow up an er er orphanage. Yep. Brave bird swooped in before it could do any harm. God bless our avian based justice system. He'll be taken to trial, presided over by virtues. Shortly after you and Bonnie went to look at, at a pet shop, but after seeing all the rabbits in cage, Bonnie concluded that, mu that this must be a super evil murder prison that she had heard of. She ran out screaming, convinced that the rabbits were about to murder her. Inspired. Bonnie has no idea what you just said, and to be honest, you don't either. I'm dead. Nails, really? Bonnabelle. I should have read the thing, but I didn't. For the last one, but I only got like a one sentence reply. I'd expect someone with as much potential as you to be pondering the works of Aristotle and Plato. Such banal things as snails are far, far beneath you, darling. And you should treat them as such. Now let's go read some Ulysses. I think Bonnie might hate you now. With a response like that, I'd definitely hate you too. I like slugs. <sighs> Looks like you're going to hell. Which one did I click last time? I know I clicked this the first time. Probably click this. Bonnie doesn't want to seem to reply. <laughs> I gave her the gun last time. 
Oh my god, oh my god, there's a monster under your bed. What do we do? Quick, get my baseball bat. I'm going to call the police. Police arrive at your house and assure you that there is no monster under the bed and that you should grow the fuck up. And if you waste any more police time, you will go to jail. Sick. A zombie. A zombie, because all you need is pale green skin and meaning moaning noises. And judging from the amount of candy Bonnie's going to consume, that's going to happen anyway. Bonnie most definitely enjoyed being a zombie. She seemed spent most of the previous day trying to perfect her groaning noises and the zombie shuffly walk thing. And oh my god, it paid off. When asking for brains, one of the neighbors came out with a massive bowl of walnuts and said they were shriveled little brains. Like if brains were grapes, these were raisins. The bulletproof logic of the sense totally convinced Bonnie and she absolutely delighted in consuming them. Funnily enough, she never got green and sick from eating too much candy because in Bonnie's words, zombie eat brain, not candy. Duh. I don't like how Bonnie disappears. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't want to leave. You have nothing else. You have me. Same thing. We're going to live, uh, veggie. Considering that you can produce much food, more food exclusively farming plants than farming plants, but in animals, it's something to do with the food chain. You, what the world was that? Maybe I read it wrong. I don't know. I think you were taught about it at school once. Anyway, there's these things don't look, exactly look like they're capable of hunting anything, and thankfully, cabbages don't fight back. So sticking to vegetables seems like the safer option. Treehouse. Trees sound good. It should be difficult for prey to get to them at such a height. And if this area is ever at risk of a flood, they will... Well, they will. They should be safe. Their homes are up in the sky, so no need to worry about water making them die. <laughs> Alright, I'm happy with my rhymes. Also, a big plus. If they're fruit trees, their house literally gives them snacks. Which sounds like a big bonus to me. Only your little world, monster comes out, I do something... Bop, bop, bop. Ignore it. Like a truly true intellectual, you attempt to drown the monster's nasty words with a tense screaming. None of its harsh words can pierce your sonic dome of protection. Eventually, its ears begin to bleed, its body buckling under the sheer power of your vocal cords. Eventually, it's forced to retreat, but you're too busy screaming to notice. <laughs> About an hour or two later, you notice it's gone anyway, and it finally sleep. The tiny the little creatures begin to cheer. Hooray! What would blood monster I have to face in the bad nowadays? You decide to go. Blah 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 blah. And won't you let it end? Everything you feel now, the loss, the pain, the sadness, is everything they will feel. You're supposed to love your child, care about them, but you're cursing them from the start to feel everything good and bad. But there is an escape, there is a release from this endless cycle. Don't you dare pass on your defective genes. How can there be cries when there's no one left to cry? As a great man once said, life is pain. Oh, 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 sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was just too busy thinking about how pretty I am. Oh, well, that was easy. Leave. The world begins to dissolve around you, blah, 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 blah. With the realization that your imagination can get out of hand sometimes, you decide to channel that energy into something more positive. A few attempts later, in one very jammed paper shredder later, you decide to combine your logical mind and your imagination to design fancy worlds that make logical sense. But the reason all dwarves are male is simply that human culture cannot comprehend that male and female dwarves look identical and treat each other identically. The books in being held as a feminist masterpiece, breaking down our cultural understanding of gender to its core and most fundamental components of double clicked whoops. Many, many books later, many, many completely accidental accomplishments. The book of the rise of the elves was not about Nazis and the Holocaust. It was a fantasy about pointy ear people. And how the fuck do people read into that, that like that? What? Holy cow. Now you sit in your office filled with crumpled papers and wonder if your life mattered. You did manage to make some people happy and inspire and spark the imagination, intentionally or not. If you were to think of that worth of your life mathematically, did me being alive make the world a happier place even if it was a small amount? Yes, in the end, at least I can say that. Alright. The zombie is dead. So is the ending dependent on 
what your kid does for Halloween. Six five. I don't know what these numbers mean. Six five four three six five. I don't know. I think I have three more endings or three more choices to pick from. Uh, we've done Milk TV Mozart action figure. His dolls are for girls, damn it. But she is a girl. Basically, you want a boy. Ha 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 ha. You decide to give her the manliest of all dolls. I mean, action figures. One of a T Rex. She proceeds, it looks like the little monsters, to insert it directly into her mouth hole and near chokes on it. Sick. Natural selection. But you learn from your mistakes and get her an even bigger one. Try fitting that in your mouth now. Later on, you find out that the biggest T Rexes were female, and most manly of manly toys you could think of was a lie. Oh, oh dear. Ice cream. You scream, who wants ice cream in an attempt to drown your child's stars and sugary treats? The way to, to deal with worries, sadness, negative thoughts, and feeling is to eat copious amounts of ice cream. Not a great lesson to teach your child, but you're too busy eating copious amounts of ice cream to worry, really worry about something like that. Ah, you back away in terror, letting... Which one have I done? Waste of time. Okay, so I need to do dragon's practice. Ah. Bonnie giggles with glee at your reaction and proceeds to chase you around with the building with the terrifying picture of the monstrous beast in tow. You play your part of the terrified prey with great enthusiasm, probably too much enthusiasm, considering you jumped out of the secondary story window of the building you were in to escape it. You are a true actor, and actors are willing to suffer for their art. But sadly, the ambulance crew didn't agree with your reasonable explanation of why you just jumped through the window, f through the flipping second story window, and nearly breaking your spine in half. Um, Dad, our slugs do also. Yeah, no. Okay, I did that one. I did evolution. I did the Great Slug War. Life's not fair. Deal with it, Dab. <laughs> oh, that makes me sad. Can't even with the Panthers no more. Oh, that makes sense. I like slugs. Sure. Alright, what are you gonna be? Uh... Crush the weak! Oh, oh, oh! Who wasn't sad about the snail? Oh, I already clicked that one. God dang it! I don't think I'm gonna redo that one anyways. Nightmare. Bonnie thinks everything is okay. It's just a nightmare. Sometimes our imaginations just get a bit out of hand. I promise you, everything is okay. Bonnie looks back up to you, tears in her eyes. Bonnie tries to go back to bed, but ends up waking up another few times because of night terrors. You eventually decide to sit next to her on the bed until she falls asleep to guard her from imaginary monsters, but imaginary or not, they're causing Bonnie quite a the plight. You feel a bit silly on standing guard Standing on guard for non-existent creatures, but hey, Bonnie getting a good night's sleep is far more important than your fear of feeling a little silly. Nice. Uh, lawyer? Bonnie thinks this is dumb. Bonnie thinks this costume is dumb. Bonnie thinks you are dumb. <laughs> you try to explain the evils of the man and the vice-like grip it has on the common worker. But she just repeats, this is dumb. You still go out, but every time people ask her what her costume is, she says, I'm dressed as a neglected child. Sick. I wanted to get you a dog. Okay, so I've already done all these options except for one. Uh, pizza. Considering that you could produce much more food exclusive what I click pizza I think you were this is the same as the veggie one or veggie ones anyway these things don't look exactly look like they're capable of hunting anything I'll click pizza again but I'm pretty sure I just click pizza do 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 What monster we got this time? You realize, oh wow, that death doesn't matter, right? Yeah, her, I guess it just depends on what, like, 
Halloween thing she dresses up as. I think that's the main deciding factor of what the ending is. Whether you can die now or in 10 years, 100 years, sadness in the world will go up the same amount. Either your parents will mourn you or your child will, children will. When the exact stress of existence is too much, when your life has been replaced with molten lead, when you can't bear the world any longer, it's no tragedy to die. Then and there, people will mourn your death no matter where, when you die, and this is the way you and your suffering will end. Mathematically, the amount of sadness in the world will have to decrease. It's so, so selfish to keep, for them to keep you around, to draw out the pain. They're the ones who have committed the sin. They're increasing the world's sadness. To be honest, it's best for them to forget about you, to abandon them. And if everybody else has forgotten your name, you can die. Because there's nobody to remember you, then nobody will be sad. I put my case forward. Now the only thing left for you to do is to kill yourself. Bitch, please. I could never bring myself to strike something so beautiful. Have you seen me? Heck. Leave. The world begins to dissolve around you like paint starting to run in the rain. You don't... Uh, uh, oh, wait, this is the same ending. Alright, we got this ending before. The lawyer is dead. Sick. 5-4 Start We're almost there We have like Two more choices and I have to repeat For some options that I may have clicked One option that I may have clicked twice So I guess uh, Soft toy And then we'll give her a nappy We plunk down next to her with a little plush bunny rabbit Oh, it's cute. She seems mildly entranced by it. For a second, it seems like true love at first sight. But then she proceeds to insert the bunny's face directly into her mouth. Stop eating things. For a second, you think about taking it away, but she just utterly content just chewing on that pearl rabbit's face. Hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> walk on. You hear the sound of a faint whimper in the background, but you still walk on. Dragons. The dragons are way cooler than the monsters. Get with the time, kids. Bonnie stares up at you in shock and begins to cry. That was to what makes her cry out of all those options. Her tears falling onto her drawing, drawing and making chalk run. That makes me sad. The last Bonnie's teacher notices your expert attempt at parenting proceeds to yell at you for quite a long time. Then you proceed to yell back. Dragons are way cooler than the monsters because you can breathe fire, fly, and are magic. The only reason this teacher could have possibly taken offense at your statement is that she's a filthy paleontologist who wants to be a bang a T-Rex. Long story short, you're banned from going within a mile of that school again ever. I know it is sad. Wait, when we get home, we can make little, some little shells for them. They can all be safe, safe and snug. The aesthetic effect is quite interesting, considering all the snails so metal and your guard now look like they just rolled out of a Mad Max movie. And judging from how much your mailman started swearing when he accidentally trod on to, trod on, trod on, I don't know how to say it, trod on one the other day, Bonnie's method is quite effective. I like Selects too. Okay, so I clicked this one twice. I clicked this one. Uh, and I clicked accident, so... Learn from. When we make the slug shells, let's make them out of titanium. So it'll be super, super hard. And if and if they're trod on, they will be chill. They'll be like, fine. They'll be all good. Titanium shells, titanium shells. Need it, need it, need it now. That thing we do, yep. Is that a night? Monster under the bed. I've done nightmare. Scared. Unknown. Let's do check bed. Don't worry, I'm sure there's no monster on the bed. Look just to make sure. I'll go check myself. I promise there's nothing. You wake up after a peaceful night's rest. There was nothing under Bonnie's bed, but why would there be? Oh, easy. Oh, we can be a snail. That's a hidden option. Sick. Bonnie dressed up as a snail. She rejected the perfectly good costume for... Her. That was an option in other times. Sick. She made herself out of a cardboard box and copious amounts of green sludge of inexplicable origin. Bonnie was nothing but dedicated to her performance as a slug. 
Due to this, she moved at a very, very slow pace. One so slow, that first house she... I guess that might be a hidden thing, because those were not... That's not an option, usually. Sick. Hidden ending achieved. The first house she arrived to, she had... Well, had run out of candy. All the other trick-or-treaters got there first, and all the subsequent houses had the exact same problem. I'll buy you candy, damn it. Bonnie was more than a little rejected, so you decided to buy her a lot of ice cream. You both decided to spend the evening watching nature documentaries about slugs before passing out on your sofa, thoroughly stuffed with the cream of the ice. Ah, uh, here I die again. I'm really good at getting dying, I guess. I've clicked that one. I've done this one. I've done I love you. I'm sorry. And it doesn't hurt, so... At least I got to spend my final moments with you. Okay, that doesn't. Oh, it's a slug. Can't tell whether the makers of the sound are going through the most sensible, sensual joy or the worst pain you can imagine. You open your eyes and the noise suddenly stops. These strange figures in front of you, small cowering, a mixture of fear and hope on their twisted faces. One slowly creeps towards you and it appears to attempt to bow even though Okay, so this is the same text. I'm not messing. It splutters out. Please, please save us. Yeah, they they changed, but the the dialogue didn't change. But they're snail people now. They are scary looking. Or pizza. There we go. Oh, but with no weird toppings. I'm not talking about the cliche pineapple on each pizza, even though that is still the worst kind of heresy. We're talking about stuff dreamed up by the worst, most depraved evil individuals that call this planet our home, the Swiss. They put banana on their goddamn pizza. That sounds gross. How could this ever be forgiven? I mean, it was bad enough them not signing against the Nazis in World War II, but this is far, far worse. No for me, Loris Morrill, maker of this game. Sorry, really sorry. Really don't. I just thought it was a funny joke, so I wanted to put it in there. Please don't hurt me. Where do snails live? On the ground. Rip. The priorities for where the people live is not a concern. I mean, they could do it on the ground, I guess, but I'm far more interested to see if I can shoot lightning bolts. This seems different, or turn water into beverages. Probably not try these things at this time. Being extremely intoxicated while shooting lightning out of your fingertips does not look like the be one of the best conversations. La la la, monster. Laser beam. I'm a laser beam. Okay. So, hidden snail ending. Thick. All your creations from their homes, the bountiful food you gave them. There's none of it. There's nothing. You can't keep me out forever. You can't keep us out. This is not a fairy tale. This is the same. <sighs> Do you feel then the seconds passing by like sand in the hourglass and you decide to spend the few you have with me? I have to say, I'm quite flattered, but look, really you can do better. You could be out there changing the world for the better, making lifelong friends, falling in love, be, being an Olympian, a great scientist, but no, you decide to spend the time fucking with me. You realize the longer you listen to me, the more time you waste. But no, you just keep sitting, keep on sitting there listening to my dumb voice. Do you have any idea how much time you've wasted already? Time that you'll never get back? But no, you had decided to spend it here. With me. Oh, I know. Time is priceless. You most certainly shouldn't be flattered. I've been this much with you. I'm walking like a real perfection, and yes, I do understand your point. Time is finite, but while I'm around, you're, I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Suddenly, you're back with the snail people. Your little monster friends surround you celebrating. You did it. Sick. Leave. Oh, I'm a rapper again. Sick. So, I can't, this, what is that? The spiral is dead. Sick. Alright, we got one more, like, answer choice. I'm glad we found, like, kind of a secret ending in the snail, or secret path. Alright. 
best options, Nappy. Arm checker Nappy. You are truly brave. Bravery is an interesting concept. Saving the world from a dark monster is not innately brave, but walking outside your front door could be. It's all about how f much fear you're going through at the time and how much you manage to overcome it. Do you just change your baby's nappy? Oh, that's a diaper? I was thinking we were going to give her a nap. You're truly the bravest out of all of us. Oh my. It's nature. Please don't cry. I know it's sad, but hawks have to eat. Nature can be twisted, but for predators, it's either eat adorable, fluffy animals or well starved to death. It might seem cold-hearted, but that's how the world works. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Bonnie cries a lot, a lot. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. When dinner comes, time comes, she refuses to eat meat on her plate. She vows to never consume the flesh of an innocent creature again. It probably didn't help that you were serving rabbit for dinner. But the next morning you cook some bacon, and as you can imagine, her stint with vegetarianism didn't last as long as hoped for. Alright. Practice. I'm really sorry, Bonnie, but it just looks like scribbles to me. But nobody starts off good at something. They practice, and they practice, and they practice. And then one day, after a lot of hard work, you'll be able to draw a truly beautiful dinosaur. For a moment, Bonnie's face is very sad. But eventually, that sadden hardens into a stoic determination. She vows to become the best person at drawing them dinosaurs in the whole damn world. The tired of T-Rexes, the dawn of Diplo... What the world? Diplo Dachi. The Viscount of Velociraptors. I would go on, but I ran out of shitty dinosaur alliteration. Oh, Orm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, which, uh, it's fair. Well, they do have to carry a house around on their back all day long. I don't, I know I wouldn't enjoy carrying mine. Fairness always evens out. Life is fair. Why don't I have a mom like the other kids? Wow, chill. How does that even out? I like slugs. I got dark. You and Bonneville have had a long day wandering around the great outdoors peeping into wildlife. Okay, she killed it. Don't cry. And then this will... We have to do that option. Bonnie doesn't seem to want to reply. The unknown. Bonnie monsters aren't scary. What is scary is the unknown, so it's the darkness. It's not being able to see, so tomorrow I'll get you a book of monsters so then you will know, and it will n no longer be unknown. Therefore, no more fear. Science. Thick. It is true that a lot of fear stems from the unknown. It isn't true entirely. Bonnie didn't know about blood-sucking vampires disguised in human forms or trolls whose lives were dedicated to hunting down and eating little children. And all those delightful, nightmarish creatures, monsters, and you break gave her a book of full of those suckers knowledge of them was far, far scarier than the speculation of Bonnie and what thingy could be under her, hiding under her bed. You attempt to explain afterwards that monsters aren't real, that people just made them up for fun stories, but Bonnie doesn't believe you. The concept of people making up such a messed up things for fun is a little too statistic for her to believe. Thankfully, the video game has absolutely no horror doc content in it. Promise. There's no snow option now, so we found the secret ending. Sick. Spider. Bonnie most definitely enjoyed the costume, but it was met with mixed success. On one hand, a neighbor turned out to be an arachnophobe, and on the other hand, he gave us all the candy, as well as 20 euros, just or pounds, whatever that is, just to go away. How do I die this time? It's all going to be okay. Or is it? I don't think any of these other options matter, to be honest. I've already clicked all these. I think that changes a little bit, but not too much. Not enough to feel bad about not reading it, I guess. I always go to the bad place and deal with it. No, 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 you can't leave. Do you have any idea what would happen to you? You could trip and snap your neck like a fragile twig. You could get hit by a car, catch a terrible disease. People see 
you, they'll hate you. But if you stay here, nothing can hurt you. It's silent. It's still. You know something is going to go wrong if you leave. It has to go wrong. There's no need to feel shame. You can't help it. You're stupid, you're weak. No, you're stupid. You leave, you'll just let everybody down. But here you can't disappoint anybody through judging eyes. Just stay quiet and still with me. You can't be capable of doing anything wrong if you simply do nothing. Oh, I get it. You just want to keep me all to yourself. Sorry, honey. It's a crime to deny the world of my beauty. Suddenly you're back and my little monster friends are hanging out. Leave. Is there only two endings for the leave one? Because I keep getting the rapper one. Okay. The spider is dead. Thick. Alright, I'm gonna do that one choice I missed, because I missed one. These are new numbers, even though the ending was the same, I guess. I got like 6-5, six, 4-3, six, I think 5-4, and then 3-2. Alright, one more time. I can click through everything Birth this and time. death of oh. funny things. You bring Bonnie home, swallowed in skin. I guess we're gonna listen to it one of the last As you peacefully stroll, the next day at school, you see Bonnebelle looking up at you. Bonnie, he, um, Dad... Um, well, life. Oh, I like slugs. I like slugs. You and Bonneville have had a long day wandering around. Um, it's oh, dead. oh, I wasn't sad about the snail. It's just. Oh, there's two it's things. The okay, I didn't Give click the wrong thing. Rest of air on his face. And on this. I right, through this. I just want to go to the credits for you guys. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a lovely autumn day. Your arm doesn't see. You try to speak, but. <laughs> You hear a faint cry off in the distance. What the? They Aww. seem to be happily meat. They seem more than a little malnourished. On top of the ground. I mean, suddenly. You're what? okay with an intro like that. Wait, wait, wait a second. Oh, what are these meant to be? The hell is going creatures super speed. Begin to like a true intellectual, your little creatures begin to cheer. Hurr. Well, if it came from the bad place, it being bad, you know. <laughs> go. So you decide to go. No, well, you're charming little creature. I want to keep me see the first part of the spider in the Honestly, again. I'd love to. Oh, yeah, but if I stay still, leave. I can't shake this feeling of raw. Honestly, I'd love to, but suddenly you're back. Your little monster friends surround you. I can't blame you. Every wish, every whim, every dream, every fantasy. Here right, it can guys. all be real. Thanks for watching. Save always. the world. If you like the video, please odds, like and fall in love. Have children. But Stop in the it. end, I'm doing my outro. It's Stop only it, you. Narrator voice. There we go. Hello. This is the music credits. Sick. The music for the first half of the game was done by a person called Grace Melody. Or on Twitter, their name is Grace with an exclamation mark and at power. Four six four six four six, and they're very, very, What's very this? talented, and they deserve like so much more attention than they do. It's really weird when you come across a musician. It's like it's so cool, but it's like, why weren't you like famous yet, dude? You're so good at this stuff. Highly recommend looking them up. And the other person who did the music in the second half of the game is called Chili, and his Twitter thing is Chili makes music with at chili slash tweets and he is also really 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 effing talented oh my god i love his stuff i really really do oh my i just i would really really recommend looking the both of them up it, it would mean a lot to me and i know it would mean a lot to them that they're, they're, that's they're awesome and they deserve all the loves bye bye hope you have a wonderful day I don't know what Opion does. You won't let me click it. Alright guys, thanks for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed the video. We clicked all the answer choices. Hopefully we got all the endings, but I don't know. I'm not going to... There's too many options to be like clicking different ones every time and try to get different endings, but it looked like they were all similar to an extent. Um, but thanks for watching as always, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day slash night slash whatever time zone it is for you. Alright guys. Bye! Oh, and if you like the video, please like and subscribe. I always appreciate it. Hey.